What's up everybody, my name is Joshua Wade and I want to thank you for taking the time to check out this video and the topic of conversation today is a little bit different. Um, I was at my buddy's recording studio which is primarily analog and I was helping him set up his digital analog hybrid rig and that was pretty cool. I just happened to be there talking to him about some stuff and I started thinking, you know what? Maybe somebody out there in video land, internet land would maybe want to see some cool old school analog stuff. So I asked him, I said, hey, is it okay if I just start filming some stuff with my iPhone and my monopod I just happened to have it with me. And he said, yeah, absolutely, man, we'll go over a couple things. So it was really cool to see an old reel-to-reel. -reel. Everything in there was completely functional as it should have back in the day. And um, it was pretty pretty neat, pretty neat. So um, without further delay, here's uh, the video that we captured last second. So I hope you guys enjoy it. They have like a following, man. Uh, people, there's they like a forum a and slow, stuff. small underground following. Um, this is not the best of the best, but it's not the worst of the worst either. It's kind of like mid grain. It's not an SSL or API or anything like that. But these are basically uh, old, uh, maybe 25, 30 year old Tascam consoles. Uh, this is actually two I've got linked uh, together. Um, I did have them linked for channels one through eight and then channels nine through 16, but I've since changed that. Um, but it just looks cool to have more knobs than you actually need. <laughs> but no. basically, it comes in through the snake out through the wall, comes in through the channels like you do on your modern day stuff, but it's all physical on hands. And uh, you can EQ, add effects, take away effects, go through the inserts, add your compression or outboard gear, and that all gets dumped onto the tape machine. And that's stuff that a lot of people won't see anymore but there's a cool sound to it. Uh, tape saturation, compression, you don't get that uh, with computers. Although you can come close, I've recently learned. <laughs> <laughs> so it's you, this one now, so you basically, you've got the patch bay, I can see. Yeah, right? a few of them. A few of them, yeah. <laughs> see, I was, we were making jokes earlier, um, my patch bay on my laptop is just uh, right click and click. send wherever I want to. But you are, we're getting you on the digital trim, also on the digital yeah, trail. but I'm not letting go of the analog. <laughs> I don't blame you. It's going to be a tool that's just another tool in the toolbox. So there's your, your interface, your Tascam, the that US 1800. One, yeah, the older Tascam 1800. And then you've got all your, you've got all your sins and stuff basically going, that are going to go into the interface and yep. you can pretty much all your real to real stuff you can dump into digital. I can patch in through the patch bay and send the signal wherever I want. And now that I have this interface, I could do multi-tracks uh, up to 16 and uh, dump everything off of the tape machine uh, in separate stems. We'll call it stems for the <laughs> new guys. And uh, mix everything down via DAW. That's another word I just learned. It's <laughs> not duh like Homer Simpson. <laughs> it can be if you get, once you get, until you get used to it. That's It'll right. be a duh thing for sure. That's right. But uh, yeah, I've got numerous analog gear here that I still like using. Yeah, this is pretty cool, man. You got the old DBX 163 axes and everything. So the, these DBX, the compressor limiter, I had one of these back in the day. Because that was not very old. This is probably no. what, 10 or 12 years old, maybe? Something like that. But the 163X, I think those came out in the early 90s. You can Google me on that. That's cool. <laughs> That's cool. But now it's still... I still do the old way. I like the old way. Um, it's just easier and quicker for me to do it that way. Well, see, so you got the you got the computer. You got the Dell. So yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you're getting there. It's <laughs> I got a Dell. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> got so a Dell, dude. This whole video is gonna be like circa eighty-one to like ninety-nine ish. Well, as in nineteen. The nineteen. Last, the yeah, last yeah, century. Yeah, the yes. last century. <laughs> dude, you're getting a Dell. <laughs> but it's it's pretty nifty, man. And, I mean, I, there's something about analog that's just really cool. Now, this this is the old machine. This was the one we cut yeah, back in the day on, isn't it? You clear some garbage out of here in spider webs so you can actually <laughs> see it. Cover up this computer stuff. It's, that's not interesting. <laughs> Everybody has that. Yeah, we don't want that. It's and this is a Tascam 388? 388, 8-track machine, spider webs and all. But uh, it's a reel-to-reel, 8-track -reel, uh, recorder. It records on uh, quarter-inch tape. Oh, that's cool. Like I say, I haven't dusted this one off yet. Long time. Well, you got the Beast over there, so you wouldn't the really... The 16. Yeah, I got this 8-track, the 16. I also have the uh, DA88. Uh, 
that I use sometimes. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, this was the first one. Not my personal first one, but it's the first one for this place. That's pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, we did, we did track a few on this. There is a big following for these now. There's a lot of guys still using them over in the UK. And, uh, they're, they're using them quite a bit. That's pretty cool, man. And, yeah, I think I remember seeing the the forums on Facebook and stuff like that. These things have, like, a cult following. Or there they're is. starting to have one now. There is. And they're they're really... They're going up in value big time, man. And I still... Got three to pop your delete. I still got some new tape. <sighs> hey, there you go, everybody. Real-time studios, if you need... And if you're... Uh, you need if a good deal. If your computer or phone was scratch and sniff, you can actually smell the tape. <laughs> You can edit that out. What did, what did I say before? I said it smells very flammable. Yes. <laughs> so you've got now, okay, so you were explaining to me earlier, this is a one inch? One inch tape. Okay, yep. but it's 16 tracks, right? One inch tape, 16 tracks. Uh, most of the bigger studios use two inch tape, 24, but they do offer, uh, they have 16 track and two inch format, uh, obviously 16 and one inch format. Yeah. Uh, there was, for a short period of time, uh, Tascam made a 16-track machine on a half-inch tape. Uh, and then digital came into play and it squashed that. <laughs> I think it's an MSR-16, if I remember right. But uh, I'll Google it. I'll put it on the screen if you're wrong. <laughs> it's, it looks just like my dad's 8-track, uh, 80-8, but it's 16 tracks. It's the yeah. same physical size on a half-inch tape. Yeah. And this, uh, so this is, um, hey everybody, I'm Joshua. <laughs> you again? So this is, yeah, right. <laughs> That's what sucks about having the, the good camera on your phone. I can't see if I'm in frame. You, you got it on a stick. It's on a stick. So you <laughs> built this whole studio, right? Yeah. It's like from like a distant memory now. How long ago did you build this? Uh, it had to be 2015, I think. I think six years ago. Six or seven years ago, it took me about a year. You got the big window, of course, into the live room. Yeah, that window actually has a history to it. Yeah? When we first moved to Florida, that was in a studio in Ocala. And my dad and I were setting up our own studio at the house, so this guy was going into a different business uh, venture. So he sold us a bunch of his gear. We bought this board from him. We bought one of the compressors from him. And we also bought the glass out of his studio. And we put it in my dad's studio. And now that my dad's not doing much, uh, we took the glass out and put it in this studio. So it, there's a little bit of history for me personally in that. Just the glass alone. That's pretty cool. And it's angled, of course. And in yep. the live room is... How long did it take you to build all this stuff? Uh, it was about a year. About a year? I did everything by myself. The only thing I didn't do was the air conditioning. Yeah. Slacker. Well, you know. <laughs> a man looked like, uh, what was it Dirty Harry said? A man's got to know his limitations. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of people that I know that need to learn that, actually. <laughs> this is cool, man. What, Dirty Harry? <laughs> L know your limitations. <laughs> Got the couch, which, yeah, you know, I would do a studio tour of mine, but uh, it would be in my bedroom. So. That's not <laughs> With my laptop. Yeah, yeah. Here's my studio. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, right? There's where I sleep, and here's where I cut the, hit, cut the hits, man. That's where I cut the hits. And you've got this this weird thing. Oh, good lord. What, what, what is this? This is a. Pick on my other guitars. <laughs> this is what they call pedal steel, single neck, 10 string. That's cool. Three on the floor, uh, four new levers. It's a standard one by today's standards, Lloyd Green model. That is actually a 76, very clean. Really? And uh, it's, as far as we know, it's never seen a bar room or a honky tonk or anything like that. So I'm getting this footage for all you steel players out there that might watch this video and you'd be like, I know exactly what that is. And then you've got my stupid ass, which is like, ah, I don't know what that is. <laughs> and that is a 76 model which is the same year I was born. So oh, that's cool. I had to have it. You just you just put your age on, on uh, YouTube. I oh, yeah. was born in the 70s. I'm years. old enough, I don't care. <laughs> I'm happily married. That's, the dating thing doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And then you just, you've got the basic microphone that was the AKG. One of them. Yeah, you've got a couple. you got the ribbon mic, too. That's pretty cool. And these, now, what do you think of these two preamps, by the I way? I like them. The ARCs? I, I use them all the time. I basically use them uh, for the Phantom Power. I don't use the Phantom Power on the console, but I use those. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if there's that much of a difference, but I like them. They're, they make it easy to use. You know, I've used them a couple of times, and honestly, like, I remember back in the day, you can get them for, like, 130 bucks. Still, it's still the same. Yeah, is it really? <laughs> yeah. They work, though. They're, they're great. Then you're... I used to use them for, uh, I also use them for acoustic preamp. Yeah. Like, if I'm uh, even electrified acoustic, I'll plug the, uh, the guitar directly into that, and that'll give it a little bit warmer, warmer tone. That's pretty cool. And the upright, the fiberglass upright. Yeah, that's a half size. That's not a full size. That's a half size? It's a half size, yeah. Well, that makes sense now that I'm closer to it. Of course, those watching don't have really any comparison. <laughs> and so I've seen I've seen a real one or like a full size one. And Most of the ones are that are common are three quarter. Yeah. The full size you don't see much anymore because you can't carry them. You, you can't yeah. get them in a car. Yeah. They're just too big. And then, uh, of course, the vacuum. Well, you gotta have a vacuum. You gotta have a vacuum. <laughs> gotta have it. And then more amps than I know what to do with. <laughs> I see that. Is that PV? Is that a bass amp? Nope, that's uh, steel guitar. Oh, steel guitar that's amp. The, yeah, the Nashville 112. Okay, okay. And then your crate acoustic, that's an acoustic amp, right? Yep. Then the big massive PV cabinet behind it. Oh, yeah. The one that nobody wants to carry. The kids it's for are sale, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Studio baby. <laughs> yeah. We're not we're not tracking today, it's okay. That's what happens when you live out on a farm. <laughs> well, this is cool, man. So that's it guys. Um not too shabby, I don't think, for a really quick iPhone video inside of my buddy's studio. Um if you got anything out of this video, continued support is greatly appreciated. So if you want to just go ahead and hit subscribe on YouTube or follow me on Instagram, that would be awesome. And if you're into tutorials for different DAWs, mainly Presona Studio One, I do a lot of those. And yeah, if you got any type of value out of this, again, continued support is greatly appreciated. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.